Hi guys. Today I wanted to share with you another infographic, one which, or two, uh, which I would really like to see being used more often in the workplace. What I particularly like about the vertical and horizontal tornado chart is the way that they enable us to depict such a large variety of correlations or trends um, shared across a wider than usual selection of category variables all within a single chart. Now, for example, uh, using this chart by itself, the viewer could take whatever information they wanted, say, to compare the volumes of female Democrats in 2001 to the female Democrats in 2002. Or, looking in a single year, they could compare female Democrats to their male counterparts. Or, Instead, they could look at female Democrats and female Republicans. And then you have probably a handful of other uh, options as well, all within a single chart. And in my mind, this is just about the only way that you can unlock so many levels of multivariable analysis all while using a single chart. Now, unfortunately, what is one man's pro can be another's con. As in this case, whereas I actually like the idea of leaving it to the viewer to deduce what information is actually important to them at the time that they're looking at it, um, others might view this freedom as ambiguity, claiming that a truly proficient analyst should always have a clear singular message in mind when creating their infographics. And to be fair, for example, if I knew that the person I was going to show this chart had absolutely no interest in comparing and contrasting between genders, either within a single year or over a stretch of years, uh, I probably wouldn't bother uh, adding this level of detail just because I knew how, uh, how to do it. Uh, simple is usually always best. Okay. But uh, with that said, I still want to show you how I made that chart. Uh, first thing, I don't know if I showed you guys how to do this before, but this is actually a cool trick I picked up a little while ago. Uh, these two windows here are actually all for the same uh, file, which is a tornado chart. Uh, the one and two just tells you that this is a copy of the other. So, because if you go down to my tabs here, you see in Tornado Chart 1, I have Chart 1 here. In Tornado Chart 2, I have Chart 2 tab. But if I just go here, you'll see it's the same thing. I can switch it back and forth. And this can be particularly helpful when you are trying to use formulas in one tab to apply to cells in another, or if you have your data table in one tab and your chart in another. Uh, you can quick easily switch view both at the same time and just to show you how to do it um, you'll go to view and then new window and see now we have tornado chart 3 but it placed itself right on top so what we'll have to do is arrange all and there's a variety of options here, but usually I think you'll want to go with the tiled uh, option. And here you see now there's three <clears throat> and split into thirds. Uh, important to note is the last one that we open, chart three, is the larger one. Okay, but I just wanted to share with that with you guys because it's pretty cool. And I'll probably be doing this in future videos as well. All right. So how do I make a tornado chart, either vertical or horizontal? Uh, the process is the same, uh, and I'll go to my data tab. Uh, what you'll want is your data to originally be laid out the way you see here in uh, columns C through F. Uh, in my chart, you'll notice that I go between 2001 and 2016, and I have for gender, I have two different categories, either male or female. And then parties, I have Democrats and Republicans. And so if you just do the math there, we have 16 different years, two genders, and two parties. So you do 16 times 2 times 2, I believe, should get you uh, 64. So there's 64 different uh, possibilities or combinations. 
that you need in order to produce this chart. Now, if, if one of these was missing, then the count would probably be zero, and my chart would probably address that properly, but I'm not sure. Uh, but this is just an example, uh, so don't get too nitpicky here. Okay, to create this example, I just did 2016, 2015, and then I dragged it down. And then once I had that, I copied and pasted it, and then did male, female, and all of these are Democrats. And then, so this is all female Democrats, this is all male Democrats, and I have male Republican, female Republican. And that's how I made sure that I had every combination. Uh, the count is just a random between 1 through 32. Now, one sort of weakness uh, with my chart is that half of the data, the Republicans in this case, uh, the values needed to be negative. So originally we had 11 male Republicans in 2016. In order to place them right below the uh, male Democrats, I had to make it negative, okay? Uh, so you'll just need to add that additional column. So whatever uh, category you're going to have on either side of uh, whatever your center point is, either the central vertical axis or the center uh, vertical axis, whatever is going to be your two different colors, uh, one is going to have to be positive values and the other is going to be negative values. Uh, you might do this by hand, or I have this formula. Um, what this is saying is if the first character, <clears throat> basically in column E, is a D, then leave it as whatever's in uh, column F. Otherwise, I want the negative of what's in column F, because it's either Democrats or Republicans, D's or R's. Okay, so in Next, once you have your base data, what you're going to want to do is reformat it into uh, this. So one column has your years, one column has uh, your genders, categories, and then you have two headers as the two uh, different color categories that you're going to have in your chart, whatever they should be. There's different ways of doing this. I'll show you a cheat way later, but I think the best way to do it, since I have uh, two categories here and you want a blank row in between, if you look at my chart, I wanted to clearly separate the years with a blank space. In order to do that with a column or a bar chart is you need a blank space in between your categories. So this column case goes blank, blank, 2016, blank, blank, uh, 2015, and so forth. So all you have to do is just wrote down the first two years, like so, K1 through K6, and Excel is smart enough to realize exactly what I want here. Okay, now there's a bit of a cheat that's kind of very subtle, but if you look at my chart here, looking at 2016, uh, in 2015, you'll notice that 2016, the large bars, it goes male, female, blank space, large bar. Whereas all these other years have large bar, male, female, large bar, blank, large bar. And so that difference is really subtle. I think it was most helpful on my vertical axis uh, or my vertical tornado chart. It allows uh, the year to have a little bit more space. I think uh, this, the other years probably look a little bit cleaner. And I'll show you by doing that trick again. New window, arrange, tiled. Okay, doesn't matter which one I select, but now watch. Looking at uh, 2016 down here, it's the one with the extra space. Um, you'll notice in this blank row that there is no space, whereas every other one after it, I added a space to it. Okay, so if you put, if you enter a space, if you enter anything, you see, um, it's going to make a new a parent category space, but if you have absolutely nothing in it, then it's going to assume that 2016 should consist of all three rows here. 
okay. So that's kind of confusing, but in any case, you have the year, the larger category, and then each one of the smaller categories. And I showed you how to get this quickly descending pattern, blank, blank, year, blank, blank. Uh, male, female works the same way. Okay, these headers, I just hand typed. Okay, uh, the real trick, and there's a bunch of different ways to do this. You could go super complicated using a really heavily nested offset function, which was what I used the first time I created it. But you guys are lucky. I've discovered an even better way of finding, quickly looking up these values. So I want the number of Democrats that are male that are in 2016. And the way I look that up, uh, and I think it's just about the easiest way of looking it up, other than my cheat, which is actually in some ways not still not as good, is I have this here, and I'll uncolorize it. Okay, so whereas in column K, I only I don't have the year repeating. Uh, in column I, I am repeating uh, the year uh, up until the point when I need a new year. And the function I used here was if what's in uh, column K plus zero is greater than one, then give me K. Uh, otherwise, give me what's in the cell right above it. Okay, so the first row has uh, a number in here, so it's going to produce uh, something. Now, if you uh, didn't have years or numbers in this, this wouldn't work, but you would probably just have to do this by hand instead. But uh, in any case, going down, now because I had a, you'll notice uh, this 2016 uh, is the only time you actually see a result here. Every other time you get a value error. Uh, that's because here uh, we have a space, which if you add zero to space, it equals zero. It's just how Excel interprets it, I believe, is what's going on. Maybe, or maybe not. Pretty sure, if that makes sense. Uh, whereas if you try using this function on a truly blank space, then it can't do anything plus a blank, because basically null or blank uh, isn't a number at all, so you can't add a number to something like that. It's like trying to add one to female. Um, it, you know, that, that doesn't work. And so you'll get an error. Either way, so in short, you want the years to be repeating as many times as is appropriate in a column. And then you want a concat concatenation with uh, the gender and the year. And that's what you have here. Notice that it blows up when you uh, have nulls here, or when you have an error as one of the cells. There's an error here, so that's not going to work, but it's okay. And we did the same thing over here, uh, but in column B, now I have a concatenation of the year, the gender, and the party all together, and that's the secret. So with this here, the concatenation of all of the uh, categories that we're interested in, or variables, I should say, uh, then we can do just a simple VLOOKUP. What are we looking up? We're looking up the concatenation of year, gender, and the party. And here I've locked the column in J, and for the party, I'm locking the row, okay? And so that way, after this cell has been entered, I can just click and drag it down, and that'll give me my table. Once I have this, all I have to do is select from K2 to N2 and go select all the way to the bottom of my chart. Go to insert. Now if you want a if you want a horizontal tornado chart, then you'll go with a column chart with uh, stacked columns. Okay. Alternatively, you could you could do a vertical. There you go. Looks a little messy. Excel will naturally assume that you want uh, your year and gender to be right in line with the uh, vertical axis here, the zero line. Uh, but that's easy enough to fix. Just go to Format Axis by selecting it. 
and you'll just change this instead of next to axis you want low or you I guess you could do high instead doesn't matter uh, you decide same thing here change it to low um, I think in both of my charts I move this to be at the bottom my uh, legend okay uh, it looks a little messy because these this is this is a lot of years uh, to show all at once and that's this is where it kind of pays to have that extra uh, row associated so to not have a blank in your third row because then it allows you see 2016 is full out but 2015 needed to start a new line that's it's totally up to you uh, what you think looks best uh, the other thing that I did with my chart is I also formatted this and changed this to just uh, the gap width to 50% just to make that a little bit more substantial okay and now one annoying thing about the way that I've created this is the fact that y you have uh, negative numbers it's kind of unavoidable so if your chart is going to be the kind where people are going to be looking at the values and say how can you have negative 29 uh, female Republicans in 2013 that's kind of unavoidable if hopefully people are just going to look at your chart on its face value without really trying to get into the nitty-gritty putting their mouse over one thing that will save a little bit of confusion you know you have uh, this so you can always delete that so again it's you're really just trying to say uh, this is l much less than this and so forth but if you need the actual values then that will probably have to be another video when we add dynamic labels uh, to each one of these which would probably be a little time consuming okay but I think that's just about it I will probably do another quick video showing uh, the uh, pivot table shortcut to this process right here um, thank you guys again for watching and tuning in to uh, my ex I excel and so can you channel uh, I appreciate your comments and questions and I'll make sure to post this to my OneDrive uh, so that you can just use this as a template for whatever and please if you can convince your bosses that this might be a useful chart for some report please let me know uh, I have not had much success with mine uh, for the reason I explained at the beginning of the video thank you guys so much for watching have a great day bye